Hello everyone, my name is Andreas Diaz, me and, well, Chris and I are back again for a spectacular Andreas pop culture talk. Of course, this is on a movie recently, of course it's a horror movie, of course, Scream 6. Uh, this is a, a full-blown spoiler, uh, spoiler cast, so don't listen to this podcast yet, see the film, come back and listen to it. We're gonna like just spoil everything because me and Chris saw this film twice. So yes. Anyway, Chris, how you doing? <laughs> how are you doing, buddy? Um I'm glad to have this podcast with you again. Um as you as you know now know we did see Scream Six twice. Um yeah. it was a lot of a lot of blood, a lot of uh slashing and as usual it had its uh twists and turns and uh hopefully you know, after some time, depending how it does in the box office, which it has done pretty well, hopefully there'll be a Scream 7 if it gets green-lighted by the studio. Yeah, I mean, which is guarantee. I mean, I, it's weird. It Are they doing, I hope they're not copying the Chucky Season 3 thing, because um, when Chucky Season 2 came out, and then afterwards, uh, like, there was no word out of Season 3 of Chucky. So, then, I think it was, like, the end of December, I think, or the beginning of January, we got the confirmation of of Chucky Season 3 coming back for this fall of 2023. So, I wonder, are, like, they're just going to pull the stun like that, or, like, maybe right now they're just trying to, you know, sign up every major actor slash the directors of... Radio Silence to be back for the seventh film, you know, because we don't know, like, they were just signing on to just do two, and then the third one was like, uh, if the second one did well, we can do it, and and then sign in, you know, but, um, but yeah, yeah, so, um, but we'll see, we'll, 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 we'll see, I mean, it's guaranteed, I mean, I don't know what else, I mean, I mean, I mean money this week, I mean, I mean, poor Sasham, that didn't do well, so yeah, so yeah, so Scream Six. So anyway, so okay, let's let's kick it back. So uh, just to recap, we seen five, right? And yep. mm-hmm. from the conversation, you and I, and then our our fellow friend, Miss Flamingo, right? You're not into horror, so is this franchise your like first horror like adjacent to get into yeah i would say this franchise is uh my first uh exposure to uh horror films um i definitely liked uh scream 5 and how it set and how it beautifully set up for you know scream 6 Mm-hmm. Uh, but obviously, obviously, I liked uh, Scream Six better. I felt like you saw a lot more, and I yep. felt like there was more arc. There was more arc to uh, Sam and Sam and Tara, mm-hmm. and felt like uh, Mindy, Mindy, and Chad had more of a bigger role because I felt like you. I think there was more screen time with those two in particular than the fifth one. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I think I agree because I think the common criticism, like like besides Tara, I think Tara was like everyone's favorite. It, but when we got to, like it was kind of like everyone didn't click with a lot of the new characters. You know, it was only one new character and the the OG Lexi characters. So I I feel like uh, this movie did a better job of. Like uh, giving Sam, like Sam, more spotlight and better material, and then yeah, give Chad and um and Mindy more to do. So yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I'm actually I'm actually kind of glad that only, you know, that only Gail was in this film. They didn't have like all the OG characters because um I just felt like you know let's mm-hmm. see let's see you know like our fresh new our fresh new faces you know. Yeah, that's true. I mean. It was her and Kirby, so that was like the only two legacy characters we brought brought back. So, yeah. So, yeah, I I totally agree with you. Um. So yeah, I I think everyone, like I think you and I and everyone, I kind of agree. We really like this film more than the the last one because I mean the last one like was a recall as they call it. So like it was like 
you know, retraining similar ground to the first film, the first Scream from 1996. And so I feel like this one, it was like, okay, we got, we already did the, you know, Rico thing and everything else. So now we're like, we're doing something new. We're doing something fresh. We're like fully developing, you know, the, the new characters we, we got introduced with the last film. And so, and like, we're also sending a new setting, which is great. Um, it's not the first time. I mean, the, the second, third were like Elseworlds. I mean, the second film was in college, uh, somewhere else. And then the third one was in LA and Hollywood. Uh, so, but you know, from the first and then, yeah, the fourth and fifth, we were like, yeah, the, like the last two films were basically Woodsboro. And so like this film was great to go into a different setting. Of course, New York. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I, I think this film was, um, much better than the last film, but I will, we will have criticisms, uh, and nitpicks. I will say I think this is the weakest Ghostface killers we have, but we'll discuss that. But, um, but, and, I mean, never that, I mean, it was a great ride. I, I think everything has delivered, uh, in my page. Yeah, but. uh, yeah, I felt like, um... You know, at first, you know, as usual, it seems like the Ghostface killers had an advantage, and the way they they set things up, you know, it was they were pr they were pretty smart, and like you know, throughout the film, they were always you know one step one step ahead of our of our you know core four <laughs> as as they would call it um, until in you know until the fight until the final act, but I was thinking. You know, if I if I was if I had knew, known anyone in the studio and the cast members, the idea I would pitch for the next one is like, okay, mm -hmm. how about this time the ghost face killers, you know, survive instead of the typical typical they end up, you know, all dead at the end. Yeah, um, I think it's time for like a new a new formula, you know, yeah. kind of like what. Marvel did with Avengers Infinity War in which, you know, the Avengers lost, our heroes lost, because we're so accustomed to them winning. So I feel like uh, for the next one, if there happens to be a next one, they they should take that kind of formula to get fans, you know, antsy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was very surprised they didn't do it in this film, honestly. I mean, it could have been a good choice, but like, I mean, we haven't Confirm like Ethan. I mean, Ethan somehow survived from that like night stab from Tara, uh, you know, played by uh, Daniel Ortega. And so, like, I, I wonder if the TV wasn't enough to kill him. So, I do wonder if he will survive, but we'll see. I mean, I oh, 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 no, oh, you know? no, it, it definitely killed him. Like, it, it literally, the, t the TV literally crushed his head. And so, yeah. He, That's true, he, but I mean, this TV killed Stu, and then we're having rumors about how Stu is alive. So, I mean, again, I don't know what's, I don't know what, like, like we need to see like chopping limbs and and, and tongues or like the neck to confirm their uh, dead. I, I, I think we saw enough brutality at Screen Six. So I think we should keep it light. Well, I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, I, I don't know what what's like what's confirmation of dead and then being alive. But anyway, I well, you know, I liked your idea. I mean, I guess we're sort of getting that with Stu. If that's coming fruition, uh, if you know, if he's gonna be the next main Ghostface, but we'll see. Um, but but anyway, so uh, let's let's talk to the the opening. Uh, we got the opening kill, you know, um, we got two opening kills. So, so just like the last one, like in terms of, um, subverting expectations, you know, we, you know, got, uh, our first main Ghostface kill and, and just right away we reveal his identity and it's, uh, Tony, uh, Varvoli's character named Jason. Um, and he's, he killed his professor, his horror professor, uh, Sam waving his character. Uh, what's yeah. her name? He finished uh, Richie's film and all because he she gave him a C on on his uh, project, whatever he was doing. Yeah, Laura Crane. That's what it's called. Um, 
yeah, I agree. So, uh, what do you think about the opening? Uh, it was great. I mean, it was like, oh uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think the opening set to set the tone on uh, what what was to come. You know, definitely seeing uh, Tony Reveloid. That was uh, surprising. Yeah. Um, I was also I was also surprised that he was killed off not too long after. Yeah. Um, but then I thought, you know, well, he's in, he's a new, he's a new character himself. He's a new character himself and had Samara weaving or, uh, Reverie stayed alive or if Annika stayed alive, I think, you know, a main mm -hmm. criticism for this film would be that, okay, there's just too many, there's just too many characters and it would, you know, mess up the, the pacing and the flow of the story. So, um. But yeah, yeah, it would have nice. It would have been nice to see him just a little bit longer. But you know, it is what it is. Some you know, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you know, get straight, straight to the, straight to the point. You know, with the story because you are telling a story at the end of the day. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, so yeah, so uh, so this opening instead of excuse me, like instead of waiting for the reveal of the killer, well. We, we sort of had kind of did the actual killers we got. Um, so you know, with Jason, the character, you know, played by Tony uh, Valvoi, you know, we got the reveal, you know, and then we see him walking back to his storm, and then he, he yeah, you know, passed by uh, Tutara, you know, uh, for a minute, and then you know, we see him like having some of like a like a fluctuation to Sam, but then we 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 of course. We didn't know that he he used to be like a friend of Richie or like a maybe followers of the, the of the staff franchise, right? And then we go to his apartment and he gets the the, the call that was presuming to be his lover. I guess uh, he's gay. I guess he's a uh, a gay man. Uh, uh, these both men are serial killers. They're trying to kill Sam. Uh, and Tara because of what happened last year's events of Scream uh, 5 and, and so you know he's thinking he's talking to his roommate or lover I don't know what I, I mean they never confirmed that they were maybe group, like lovers or roommates but whatever um Greg and then you know he gets teased and you know he explains uh, you know the, the kill he did just now we just saw you know about how she was like becoming more like an animal and so uh, that was very creepy. I mean, with the few scenes of Tony Valeri, I think he he could have been a great killer. I mean, I gotta say, I was kind of disappointed we didn't keep him around. Uh, uh, so I was like, oh my god! And yeah, and then and then he gets killed by the ghost face, the actual ghost face. I was like, oh, I didn't see that. And then I I just loved the the, the cut to the screens when he say like, I pardon my French, like I don't. Uh, who gives a fuck about movies and then mm -hmm. just cut it to Scream 6, the titles. I, I was like, oh my god, mm -hmm. that's so perfect. And I think both times our audience were laughing at that <laughs> when he did that and then, like, crashed to the screens. Um, yeah, I, I, that opening just got me hooked right away. Um, but yeah, sad, you know. We yeah, and, and I think that was um, the director's intention was to get you hooked, you know, yeah. through the opening. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I guess one criticism you can say is like, uh, like, if they were gonna do that, I just, I wish the, the killers we have here, I, when I say killers, like, well, I, I didn't tell, like, how can I say, like, killers, like, in three people, like, uh, like, I don't know, like, uh, you know, multiple, like, if you're gonna have, you know, your main ghost face killers, like, you need to lift up, and I gotta say, I don't think they li really lift up the, the killer's reveal with this opening, so, like, that's my disappointment, really, when I saw the, the, the second time, I feel like, yeah, maybe I missed that, but we'll, 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 we'll get into the, the, you know, the actual killers later, but anyway, um, uh yeah, opening. Uh anything uh anything you want to bring up with the opening? Um uh the whole kill there. Um Uh yeah, it the the kill was more I would say the opening kill was more brutal than all the kills in Scream Five, in my opinion. Because oh, like the, yes. the 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 killers, you know, they took things to another level. 
by you know with multiple <laughs> multiple stabbings and yeah. sometimes sometimes and well especially with with Annika in particular uh and with Mindy you know the ghost face killers would yeah. stab stab them and then drive the lodge the knife deeper into their to their stomachs um so these killers were much more uh brutal definitely i would yeah. say much more brutal than like richie and uh, uh ember em ember ember and yeah and ember yeah um, ember but, um, you know it was but it was kind of disappointing that like you know they were all they were all killed off you know i felt like they should have one of at least one of them should have least at least uh lived, lived lived to see another kill and set up you know their next moves for the next one uh, and i wait. i didn't tell you this but i feel yeah. like down the line for more screen fills screen um films that uh again our core four heroes will uh go up against a cult of uh, ghost face killers and i felt like when they went to that you know secret secret layer that you know that was set up and you saw you, that's yeah. true yeah the shrine yeah. and you yeah. saw you know you saw a different mask and i guess like you know the suit and you know it, it really you know it really felt like you know a cult you know this is something that a cult would do like keep yes. you know keep precious things and have the they have their own shrine and or their place of solitude so i felt like scream six was teasing that but you know yeah. i think you know to reach its climax or scream films because eventually the story has to end right you yeah. know it should be against it should be against the uh, cult at least not just yeah. one killer not just one killer or two killers no it has to be in an, an entire group or at least it has to be one of the characters of the core four that eventually goes insane i mean for yeah. you to get chased down and stabbed multiple times like that i that'll drive anyone crazy yeah that's true yeah it's good that you brought up the brutality yeah um this was like i think the most graphic that any description has gotten i mean like we did so yeah, like, like, we saw, like, a chop head, which you usually see in, like, a, you know, Nightmare or, like, a Freddy or Michael Myers film. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I totally agree with that. And, yeah, the Attica thing, like, was ridiculous. Like, I, I, I don't know, like, you know, first off, the killer grabbed her and then slammed her into the, like, cement of the wall. And then holding her, and then just like trying to cut her through her stomach is like wow, like you have to be that powerful to do that. Um, and then yeah, like, and then like multiple stabbings, like Chad, like you, like he. Could That's easily... the second time he got stabbed multiple times and he survived. Yeah, I mean, like the first one was like like reasonable stabbing, but this one was like overkill. I was like, no, he can't kill. And then obviously, towards the end, he didn't die. And you know, you know, one thing we didn't we didn't even talk about that's I don't feel like that's not really getting enough attention. Let let's think about Mindy for a second. She got she got stabbed a few times, right? And on top yeah, of but... that, she lost her she lost her girlfriend. She literally watched her girlfriend die. Yeah, yeah like that's you, you can't you can't just you can't you you can't just uh you can't just like do do away with that kind of arc. I mean, that's a lot of trauma. You lost your girlfriend. You've got stabbed, and your your brother got stabbed multiple times again. Barely yeah. survived. You you there's no way that wouldn't drive that wouldn't drive anyone crazy. Yeah, but they're not gonna do it. They're not gonna make Mindy or Chad be Ghostface, buddy. There's no way they're gonna. Have yeah, I, I know, I know, but you know, like, still, I mean, that's still, I feel like that part of her her story should be addressed, and I think. For the yeah. next one, probably they should have a, they should have an arc where she's like going through the grief of like you know she lost her girlfriend, her brother was stabbed multiple times, she was almost killed herself, and that yeah. she doesn't always get her predictions correct. I mean, at least that they make consistent. Wait, what? yeah, yeah, but that's we okay. Uh, anyway, that's going to nitpick, but anyway, staying positive. Okay, I mean the Annika thing. 
yes, I agree. Um, I, if it's going to be a backlash, I mean, I mean, you you're doing LGBT relationship here, and like this was another cliche trope of killing one LGBT character to like impunk the other. But was or was that one of the criticisms from the film? I mean, no, no, that's like the, in general criticism in, in like in writing one on one, like in television slash movies, but. But like, I don't think anyone hasn't really t discussed that. I I don't think. Um, um, and, and 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 there's like good reasons why. I mean, we taking the violence seriously compared to other medium. So I mean, and, and well, and then the thing I like I I don't want to get into like yet yeah, criticism, but like I, I guess the one problem with exploring that is like I don't know how long. That Mindy has dated Annika in the film. Like, I don't know. Like, like it's no way six months. Like, I don't like really see that. Like, I, I so it's gonna be weird to, to do that. So because and then it's like we like kind of did that with Chad. He like he had a girlfriend in the last film and like he's fine. Like he's like, I mean, hooking up with our girl Tara. So I mean, yeah, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, ex I wasn't expecting that at all. Yeah, that he, you know, eventually, you know, Tara and Chad would like hook up and stuff. But it's an interesting yeah. relationship. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I liked it. I, I don't know, maybe it's because like it's Jenna Ortega, like she's making everything work for that relationship. <laughs> like, oh my god, like when she did her, like wink, like her, like she did like a winkle in her nose, and it was like, oh my god, that killed me. <laughs> oh my god, um, but. Yeah, I mean, so, I don't know, we'll, we'll see, um, but anyway, so, uh, let's get into this, um, let's get into characters by characters, right? Um, let's discuss Sam, okay? Right. Because last movie, like, a lot of people didn't like Sam, um, for, you know, good reasons, I think the performance that Melissa Berea performed mm -hmm. last time was very wooden, so I, I think, I you know I and I maybe the material there wasn't there for her. Uh, yeah. It, it, it was, yeah, it was very mixed, and I think a lot of people were looking right. on her character. But my yeah. God, this is but where she got a lot more out of her psyche in this one. In my yeah, opinion. yeah, <laughs> like this one really elevated her. I think this is was this was her movie. She was the MVP, and I I think she really. Delivered on everything, and you brought up the psyche. Like we did more of that, and it was like satisfying. Um, like she was very sympathetic, which was, you know, I her her scene with the table with the core four, like you know, caring for her, like like nurturing her was like very great, and just was just going through, and uh, yeah, I I think everything about Melissa Hayden's movie was really awesome, and I I think now she's in the like. Better, strong position, and like now yeah. he feels like a lead. I agree. You know, you know. Um, but but what do you think about Sam in this movie? I think she was overall great. Yeah, I I I think so too. Um, yeah, and it definitely showed. I like how it showed. Um, you know what she, what her psyche was in the aftermath of everything, of all the events from uh, Screen Five. Screen Five. Mm, Not yeah. only she found out that her father was, you know, and her family were killers, and now this the one, this the one killer. No, don't right. say that. Yeah, yeah, Billy. Billy Loomis. Well, remember, remember the mat, one of the masks that um, Ethan's had. It belonged to uh, her grandmother, oh. Nancy Loomis. No, 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 no. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I totally forgot about yeah. the the Nancy. The mom. Right. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> and you saw, you saw, like, you know how her character was you know assassinated because because of that even though you know yep. she wasn't in she wasn't in the wrong wrong here and it shows you how powerful the media is and how powerful like you know you know Technology. how people perceive you how people perceive you it really it really does you know affect you and you saw that scene where um and with her therapist she mentioned that you know i stabbed him 22 times and then the mm -hmm. therapist asked her, like, you know, you know, what were you feeling at the time? Like, how did it feel? And she was like, it felt right. 
and you saw at times where she was tempted after you know billy loomis you know ghost was speaking to her you know it felt like that you know it, it kind of felt like you know that she would snap someday and you know would she continue the legacy and i think you know that was she made a statement when she dropped the mask at the last scene you know signifying yeah. that she's going to leave that legacy behind yeah and she's not going to be like you know her father yeah exactly that's what she said to the you know detective bailey first and yeah i agree um yeah like they did such a good job of expanding her character and uh and like uh they this is what a good sequel does is like they take you in a very like it takes you in the actual logical conclusion to like expansion to the arcs or where you take these characters after your your introduction to them and mm -hmm. like sam is that and like this movies these two movies especially the new screen films like they done a really good job of exploring like the internet you know fandom toxic in general and like how like bad it is and see here you see the like the repercussion of internet and like how you know how easy people can be turned around you know by one click and i i think that all was like well done in this movie by you know sam and her situation um and like you know and you felt really bad for her and like she i mean like to be honest here like sam was actually way more mature and like she was actually doing the right things as a like an insane person you know like she went to like she went to a psychology she's taking meds you know like you know like like she's doing the right thing to cope the the situation from last year compared to you know something like her sister you know tara which you you, you also feel such sympathy to tara because yeah. you know and she but, took she she was coping with it in unhealthy ways you know partying and you know being under the influence and stuff like that but you know everyone copes with trauma and grief differently yeah um and i think yeah. going and i think uh going forward um Hopefully, Sam and Tara's relationship can continue to grow, and I feel like it did in this film. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so I totally agree. I think it'd be a good time to go into our girl, our, our well, your former crush, but my crush currently. Uh, Which cheated on me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have her now, guys. Uh, of course, we're talking about Jan Ortega, the MVP from last film. Today, you know, we're we're discussing the tarot the cheating MVP. Oh my yeah, god. The, the cheating MVP. Yeah, right. People are, uh, folks, don't ask the Chris. He's just he's just jealous that, you know, I got uh, Jan Ortega and my clone has her as well. So No, anyway. the real story is when she cheated I gave her I allowed I said, Andre, you can be with her. That's what happened. <laughs> mm. Oh my god, now you're gonna tell everyone about that? Oh anyway, anyway. So <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, anyway, by the way, I do have a clone, so I did clone myself, so, like, like, I actually have her, like, full time. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so Tara Comfner, I, like, you know, like, last film, you know, Tara was, like, the MVP for everyone. Like, you know, of course, Jared Tara is great, and, like, I, I think that would be really, like, blossom her career, you know, as of now, you know, um, but it, I gotta say, I she's great in this film. Like you know, with you know, with the expansion role from Sam and like like I I was so happy this film did a lot to like explore the the sister relationship, as mm -hmm. you were saying before. Uh, I agree. Uh, you know, Chris. You know, like it, it really has grown in in this movie, and that's good. And so I'm like very excited for the next installment to like really like explore more like in depth about the relationship that especially though know, if we're gonna get their mom back you know to be in this film so i think that's the great logical conclusion to take their uh developments as sisters um darren Tarka is great in this film like everything about what she does here is great i mean i mentioned the chad thing like it, it, if it wasn't her i think that relationship could have been just flat but it, because of jenna ortega and her performance like you know like she just oozes like just, oh my god, I, I want this relationship to, like, blossom, you know? And then just other things, like her, you know, being scared and being terrified. Like, the, uh, you know, when we get to the, our favorite scenes, you know, like, the, the 
what is it the the abogia the abogia scene or the the store scene um you know where they got chased with ghost face and he had the shotgun um i i thought that uh you know uh that really helped to uh like like that thing like made like you see a bit where Dan Ortega is like holding Sam and then like you see like a little tear coming down and it was like really fantastic and uh, I, I think that's one of the things that makes Dan Ortega really great as an actress um and then I I can like, I think also what makes it like you know uh, I think great. Uh, this time around was that she wasn't in the hospital, which was great. Like, she wasn't, you know, bench as the last film, so it was great to see her be in more action scenes, uh, and be with the other characters, if, like, finally full time. Uh, so that was really good, uh, especially with Sam, and then also the, her friends, specifically now, Pat and Mindy, you know, the last remaining of her friend group in the, the Woosboro, uh, uh, town that she lived in and so I, I think that was really great and uh yeah so I there's a lot I want them to do with uh Jared Ortega's Tara Carpenter in the next film uh and so I'm very excited for that yeah I I loved that we saw a lot more out of Tara in this film um mm -hmm. she, as she, and as you said she had a lot more action um she wasn't like stuck in the hospital and uh yeah. That was definitely uh, funny when uh, she said to uh, Ethan, you know, now, now die, now die a virgin. <laughs> it's like uh, that. That was uh, that was a uh, pretty savage. And I'm not sure if you know this, Andre. Jenna Ortega, she does a lot of good acting with her eyes. I, I mean, I just yes. I think you bought a little bit of a little bit of Wednesday in in this film because, like, you can just see you know like you know what she's thinking and feeling of like her you know just like her eyes and you can tell a lot about a person you know you know with their eyes and how they express themselves thank you i in twitter someone made a view about that her eye light her like eye rolling or eye lighting it's like yeah i know she's doing so much for her eyes in this movie it's like oh my god yeah, I totally agree with you, Chris. Oh my god, thank goodness you, you noticed that, because I, like, I noticed that as well, like, and speaking on Wednesday, you've seen the show Wednesday, right? Now, you pretty now up, because I've seen Wednesday now, recently, uh, twice, and I, I really like that show, so, yeah, like, uh, I mean, Daniel Ortega is, is, like, really, like, stepping up and, and improving herself as an actress, which was really great, and so, I, it just shows how, you know, this, I mean, MVP she is. Like, she's just doing every book in acting method or, like, acting lessons slash teachings and, and skills to put in the screen and, and just make the character feel like an actual person, which is great. And so, like, it just shows how, like, how she has come a long way since you know, her career, and then just, oh my god, yeah, it's just, oh, oh yeah, man. I think, I think she's definitely, I think she's definitely at the prime of her career, yeah. obviously with this film, and before that, she was in um, that TV series, You, and now she's got, you know, Wednesday Adams, and, you know, they'll be having a season two, um, yeah. so yeah, she's definitely, definitely um, at the highlight of her, her career, and um, I think she's gonna have I think she has a wonderful future ahead of her. Yeah, I agree. Well, I mean, besides gushing over, uh, yeah, uh, Jane Ortega, he, uh, should we go into like Chad and Mindy? I think that would be a good time to discuss that. Um, I, I mean, uh, so the, you know, just like the the Carpenter sisters, we got uh, the 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 other siblings. So like, of course, the mint, uh. The uh, mix twins, so you know, uh, Randy, uh, you know, Randy mix, uh, you know, uh, uh, I say nep uh, nephews, uh, uh, extended family, uh, whatever you call them. Um, you know, the the the, the twins are, was really great this time around. I think they were got they got better material here than on uh, the last film, like especially with Chad. I think Chad was like very underutilized here. 
uh, under the lights from the last movie, uh, where, you know, I think Mindy shined a little bit better over the last film. Here, I think both really got equal things to do, um, to shine. Like, like I, I think Chad really became my favorite character now. Um, you know, and, you know, of course, with the Terra and, you know, Chad shifting slash relationship growing was, was really good to add. But also, I just thought his humor was really great. And, like, like every time we need, like, the humor in the scene, like, he came in and, like, really delivered that. Like, I mean, when he brought up the core floor, like, that was, like, hilarious. And Yeah, like, he was the comedic relief. Yeah. So, I, I thought that was really great. Um, and so, I thought that uh, I think Chad was was great, and then Mindy. I, I thought Mindy was great. Uh, I appreciate they were consistent from the last film, so nothing really changed drastically. So um, I'm very excited to see them again. Um, I I don't know, killing Chad was maybe I mean maybe felt right, but maybe maybe next film they maybe kill off one of them. But for now, I think it was good that they keep Chad alive. But anyway. So, uh, uh, I mean, I don't know, what, what do you think about the, the twins in, in your full session? Y yeah, um, I'm definitely interested, uh, you know, in Chad and Mindy's arc, you know, uh, going, going forward. Um, you know, Mindy, as usual, she was your, sorry about that. She was uh, your uh, horror film enthusiast, and the way she explained how films are nowadays, um, it was, you yeah. know, be beautifully done. And I also loved how Monica and uh, Richie's sister, what was her name again? Oh, Quinn. Quinn, yeah, how well Quinn. they pointed out, well, if we're suspects, then you guys are suspects too, because, you know, at one point, one of you could have after everything you've been through, one of you could have just snapped and become the killer yourselves. So now, you mm -hmm. know, the main, the main characters, you know, the core four, they're on, they're on the hook. So, uh, I'm yeah. really excited for, um, you know, what they have next. I mean, they got, they got to. Yeah. Well, that. yeah, I, I think Annika, like, you know, uh, I mean, I, when Annika, like, came in and say, you know, like, they, they, had more experience in that field than they do, I was like, okay, I like this character. Um, and speaking of new characters, I think it'll be a good time to get into the new characters. Um, I mean, you know, uh, you know, except with the opening characters we got. Um, in terms of the new characters I like, I can place them into, like, my favorite to least. Favorite is, you know, uh, Annika, and then second, Quinn, and then I mean, least favorite is really Detective Bailey and then Ethan. Um, I mean, it's not the actor's fault, but I just think... Uh, well, actually, uh, the actor that played Detective Bailey, like, I think his performance was very inconsistent. And so, I felt like, you know, it... it you know, I mean, like, I, I guess he was a killer, you know, like, they were hinting at that, but I feel like if... Like, the point of the whodunit mystery is, like, you trying to, like, distort, like, just distract your audience from your character that he is the actual killer. And I feel like the Take the Bailey actor didn't do that. Um, and Ethan, I, I, he was just so obvious to be the, the, the actual, the other killer. Like, I mean, Jack, Big Cameron, I mean, he was okay. I mean, nothing much to, like, you know, rally about, I, I just thought, like, he was so obvious as the killer, and, like, even, you know, Mindy pointed out how he was, like, the low knee sidekick, and, like, he was obviously the killer, and, and I mean, just, like, the subway scene where, you know, Mindy got stabbed, it's, like, it, it was pretty predictable that was, like, him, and it was someone else helping to, like, just, you know, just, just trust the audience what was going on, I, I don't know. So, I, so, yeah, I, I don't think we really had strong characters this time around. Yeah. Oh no, actually, um, I think that was uh, Quinn that actually stabbed Mindy, and I think she mentioned it at at the final at the final act when they you know revealed themselves as as the as the killers. Yeah, I know, I know, I I know that I I I'm I'm, I'm just saying that I 
just you know like you know despite the that like like how you say it like um like detour like it was still obvious even was the killer yeah that's what i'm saying you know yeah i, I know I, mean, so. I thought i thought i thought detective bailey did well in that he was able to cast off suspicion from himself because you know throughout the film you know the the captain the, you know the core four they didn't really sus suspect detective bailey even though you know tara had mentioned you know it's kind of weird that you know our roommate's dad is on is on this is on this case um yeah. so i th it's on his case so that raised the suspicion more but then you know when we saw it the second time you know yeah. i caught the signs that okay he's the killer that was so obvious because i because i remember i said to you it's like okay this is the obvious sign i missed that uh yeah. he's the killer yeah and, well in, in the first time when we first saw him in that first scene uh in the crime scene of jason's apartment like yeah. you you're you told me that like oh he's definitely the killer and i was like yeah of course it's like because it's like it was like yeah. plenty evidence so yeah yeah i did i did say that but then um at, at the middle of the film that's when i started to be kind of started to be kind of unsure and then at mm. the scene where they were trying to catch one of them you know at that new new york city park and sam is getting the call from the kill from the killer with his voice modulator and mm -hmm. as like the drama gets more intense you know the, the camera focuses on uh detective bailey and you see you see his and you see his face it was like wait wait a minute hold hold up Right. I think uh, you know what I think I, I think I am right. He's the killer. But then for a second, I thought Kirby, uh, Kirby was the killer. And then when it turned out to be Detective Bailey, it was like, oh yeah, I was right this whole time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, we're almost there to talk about the killers for real. Because I don't know. I I think we we'll, we're going to be like different for our opinions. I think Detective Bailey was just way too campy and like i mean like when he came out from the apartment like like you know supposedly saw quinn's body he's like oh my god i lost i, I lost my daughter and then my son <laughs> and he's like they're gonna die right, they kill my family and like he's straight looking at fam was like yeah you're definitely the killer of, of this movie detective bailey <laughs> it's just uh anyway i i don't know. those are real tears anyway yeah yeah and like where's the 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 the, the tears and then the, the the i i don't know <laughs> anyway i mean at least he has a funny line like uh, you cannot take the cop card well come on it's a police card like at least he had a, a funny line <laughs> um Oh, you mentioned Kirby Reed. Um, let's get into the Lexi characters. We, we do have in this movie. So, I mean, as always, people. Um, oh, let's get into the the obvious one. I think people want to kind of hear is the Cindy Prestock uh, statement or like address. Um, the movie did a good job actually addressing uh, Cindy. Like she she deserved to have a happy ending. That's actually a very good and reasonable and actually realistic way for Cindy not to be in this movie so you know because like she like why danger your family uh, this other event last film yeah, maybe. Like, you know like like last film it made sense when Dewey died like he, she had to come to you know care for Gal. here it makes sense um so I think the filmmakers did a good job um and you know they're still open to have Cindy to come back I think you know, next time I think the camera and uh, whoever needs to like give Cindy, you know, the actress Nath Campbell the money she deserves, and I think we should be fine. But I, I think for now, I think Cindy didn't did not have to be in this movie. I think the film was like fine without her, so which is great. Um. So, but we have. Yeah, to, I, I agree with that. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't need to bring. They didn't. Need, they really didn't need to bring her because. Um, um and i felt like if she was there you know i think one of the criticisms would be okay there's too many characters and why are all the og og characters here because like it's yeah. new york new rules and they're all getting out of woodsboro so it should center on the core four yeah no i agree um well and also we're having like the last family like it wasn't really about cindy 
like it was about the staff franchise slash Sam uh, as the character. So yeah, so makes sense. Um, so uh, we we do have two legacy characters here. Um, we have Gal and Kirby. Um, so I let's uh, we'll discuss with Kirby first because with Gal I want to like slowly transition to criticisms, but let's start with Kirby. Um, I. I mean, Kirby was like a fan favorite for everyone in Screen Four, uh, and so her coming back was like a big deal. And I think this movie did a good job of Kirby. I actually really like uh, Helen Pretens, uh, the actress who plays Kirby. Uh, she's great, and uh, I think she did a great job. I mean, she's been not doing acting for five years, and I am happy that she's coming back. And I think this was a good way to turn from acting. So. Yeah, I, I love Kirby. I think they did a good job. I hope we can see her again in the next movie and do more of her. Um, the best scenes was when she, you know, um, you know, talk about, uh, you know, I had to say like the, you know, the ghost face killers, like, you know, caught me on how, you know, Roman, the, the screen tree killer being the only and one killer to achieve that. And, and she say like, he, she appreciate his ambitions. Um, you know, of course, we have a brief scene of her being a movie geek, uh, again, uh, with Mindy, when they, like, cut down, like, you know, like, Cycle 2 is underrated, and, like, her favorite Friday 13, uh, from Mindy's was different, but it was funny, um, yeah, I, I think that, uh, Kirby was really great here, um, I wish she was more active in the finale, despite her being stabbed and, and then just being taken out, but I, I really like Kirby in this film. Um, what do you think about Chris? Uh, I think Kirby was like actually used here perfectly in this film. Uh, and, and she had one of my favorite scenes when she recognized, uh, you know, her her two friends that were actually the killers of Green Four and saw the night that staff were like. I really liked that scene, and uh, and and then her talking to Tara like about her experience of being attacked as well was really great and like just hold in with the themes of grief and just how, how you handle your, your grief differently and I, I like her response that she she didn't she didn't want to be afraid from the monsters. She wanted the monsters to be afraid of her, which was a great response and I, I think I really liked it. Um it was no way she was gonna become a ghost race killer. So, I mean despite her her experience, I, I it was kinda stupid that people think she was gonna be a ghost race killer. So anyway, I like Kirby. Uh what do you think, Chris? Do you think that Kirby was your favorite, you know, among the characters. Like, did you like the development she had? Yeah, she had a strong presence in the film, and I just liked, you know, I really admired her desire to, you know, you know, fight back instead of, you know, just like living in fear because, you know, most people would live in fear and just continue to run away because you, because that trauma would be too much. But she was like, you know what? No, I'm going to do something about it. And, you know, she coped with it the right way by, you know, like getting into law enforcement, you know, learning the law and how it and how it works. And instead of like taking things into her own hands and, mm -hmm. you know, she wanted to show the killers, OK, you've made me scared of you. Now you're going to be scared of me. So I admire her desire to just fight back. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree with what you say there, Chris. Um, one thing. I, I I guess um I if we didn't lean too much on Detective Bailey as the villain, like I kinda wish we see more of like detective work from her and the and Bailey in the film. If we didn't lean too hard on the, the killer reveal that he was like the main killer. But I don't know how you could have like, done all that in this like two hour film or one hour film, whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's that you know. it's already long enough, you know, I mean, two hours, it's already long, long enough, and there's only so much you could put in to uh, two hours. And yeah. at some point, you know, you just got to keep up with the pace of the story. You don't want to, you don't always want to slow things down, because, you know, that yeah. could really, like, bore, you know, viewers and stuff. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, okay, so... I mean, let's get into Gail. And speaking of Cindy not being in this film, I gotta say, um, you know, it was great to see Carton Cox as Gail Weathers again. Um, I gotta say, I think she was not need to be beat in this film. I gotta say, you know, despite 
her, her, you know, her, uh, uh, hey, say the apartment scene that was great. You know, the chase scene of her with Ghostface was really great. Another standout of the film. Um, I like. It, I mean, this is where we get into like criticisms. Um, last film, she said that she was going to write. Uh, you know, not going to write the book about the killers for last year, and then just right away, we got confirmation she did it, and then, like, she did yeah. some, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, like, like, unnecessary things about Sam that was untruthful, and so, like, you know, like, I mean, it's consistent with Gail if you've seen all the five films, but this one was very, like, MCU, like, regression of the character, and that was totally unnecessary. And you know, despite the scenes we have for like investigating, like I don't think we really need her here. Like I think Kirby could have been a good character to investigate, like finding the shrine and the fear, and you know, like all that. Like I don't think Gal had to be in this movie. You know, despite you know, like we needed another Lexi character. I just feel like Kirby made sense to just bring another Lexi character that people knew. So I I don't know. I don't know if you have that for you, um, uh, Chris, but I, I feel like Gal just wasn't need to be in the film, and despite that apartment scene, like, it could have been anyone to do that, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, um, I do feel in a way she was necessary to the film because of the fact that, you know, she wrote, she wrote the book in the first place, and she definitely played a part in the character assassination of uh, Sam, so... You know, if oh. she wasn't in, if she wasn't in the film, you know, I would, I wouldn't have liked that because, you know, I would have been saying, wait, she wrote a whole book about what happened in the events of Scream Five. You know, why not address that a little, a little bit? So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, and, that's, that's, but that's she my... didn't, she didn't get too much screen, she didn't get too much screen time, which I liked because if she had, if she had gotten a lot of screen time, then I felt that would have taken away from the arc of, you know, the core four and much of the story. Yeah, that's true. No, no, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I agree. I I think if we delved in more about what he did, I mean, like, it could have been interesting, but yeah, I I agree. I, I just wish... I, I don't know, like, I, I, because we were, we're doing the Paris assassination in internet, so, like, why do we need it again for Gail to write in a book? Like, Especially because she brought up how, like, now, in terms of, you know, doing franchise and IP things, like, now we're doing it on television and streaming, whatever you call it, uh, you know, and so, it's, I don't know, I, I think it was totally unnecessary, and I feel like that's one of the, like, nitpicks I have with this movie. Um, another nitpick, we can say, um, I, I will have, uh, I'll throw it to you, uh, right now we can discuss the villains, the killers. Um, so, when we get to the shrine and the, the final battle, we, uh, we got three characters, uh, well, we finally got three killers, of course, uh, I mean, we've been following this, I mean, Detective Bailey, Ethan, Quinn are, are basically our killers, um, here's my favorite character, the killer, is Quinn, I think Quinn was the best, um, hers was, like, very more, like, organized structure, like, 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 okay, off the subject, that's great. Like, off the specialist, great. And, like, her turn, her, like, her turn to villainous was much better than her father and brother. And it was, like, more real, and I, I thought she was great. And, uh, um, yeah, where her father, like, I mean, he was good, he was fine, um, but it, it worked. And then Ethan was the worst, I mean, he was just, like, oh, very tactically campy villain is like oh my god no please no don't do this Ethan but yeah so uh yeah um the reveal was okay because um you know like I say like it was similar to screen two like you, you know running up the the you know the Loomis family you know when screen two came you know we got the reveal that it was Nancy Loomis who was Billy's mom and so like that movie became more like the villain plot was more personal, and so he was against Cindy. Here it was the same thing, but here it's just unlike um, Screen Two, where you know Kevin Williams and Wes Wes Craven, the director of the four Screen films, like they did a good job of hiding 
and like making that reveal of Nancy Loomis being the killer, like like really a twist and like and and of course the performance from Lauren Metcalf of you know of Nancy Loomis was great and she really sold the performance of this meek kind of upcoming reporter to this like obsessed sad mom that is like a, a, a total whack job that's going to kill Cindy because what she did with M uh, Billy last year uh, in, in the 1986 Woodsboro killings. Um, here it was just like, okay, it was Richie's family. Okay, that's like kind of neat. Like we we have like the core four or like siblings, uh, uh family like like you know sisters and then twins and then they're like core four family and then I like the idea that the killers were also family. Like I like the idea. I don't think the performances and the execution of it was like really not good. I I think it was really bad. I don't know. You have that opinion, but. I think the colors were just not strong. So, like, when, you know, this is what I mean, with the opening, if you're going to do that, like, you know, subverting expectations with the opening kill, like, the villain's kill, you know, the villain's reveal and the killer's motive had to be, like, top-notch. And this wasn't top-notch, uh, unfortunately, um, in my mind. Uh, but what's your opinion, Chris, on, on the killers and, and, and their motivation? Uh, in the film towards the end i mean it was it was pretty uh predictable you know the whole thing was yes. finished with these film and it turns out yeah. they're all richie's family so of course you know you know obviously they felt you know sam's responsible that you know we lost we lost our loved one so we're going to kill her and her and her sister we're going to kill her and her sister and, and her anyone getting away yeah right in, yeah Right, exactly. Um, I didn't like how you know Ethan would turned out to be one of the killers because you know he was just uh dorky and shot, you know, dorky and shy, you know, person. And you know, for me, per for me personally, it feels like you're you're sending a message that like just because you know someone may be shy or maybe a dork, that you know that doesn't mean you know that doesn't mean you know. He's prone to like violence and stuff and stuff like that. So I wish, you know, I wish it just had been Detective Bailey and Quinn, and you know Ethan mm. be you know part of the group because like he really, you can see like Ethan was not part of the group. You know there was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Um, okay, that makes sense. What you were saying to me the first time about Ethan, I was like, why you like you were like caring for this Ethan character. Now, I understand what you're saying now, Chris. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I can see what you're saying. Um, but the thing is, like, we're, I mean, all these characters are, like, 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 sort of stereotypically char uh, character-wise. So, I mean, Ethan, you know, and, uh, I mean, I, I guess you're right. Like, I, I guess the big thing is, like, do we really need three killers in this film? Like, that's my thing. It's like, if, if you're going to do it, then, like, each character had to have, like, their own unique motivation. Like, I think they could have done was, okay, the father's here for Richie's revenge. And then, when motivation could have been more, like, she didn't, like, wasn't close to Richie, but is here to, like, to, like, uh, like help the dad to get revenge because, and wants to, like, make up time that she didn't get, and she wants to kill Sam and Tara personally. And, you know, so, like, sort of similar, but different from it, right? And then Ethan, I think you could have done, really, is maybe do more of the Chad and Ethan relationship. I think that was something they could have done more. Like, okay, you're doing the Tara and Chad relationship, but I think it'd be kind of cool to maybe, um, maybe see more, like, the, the bro, like, the bro, friendship maybe in the film or you know because we don't like besides you know Ethan and Chad like we only got Danny to be the other male person uh, but like you know those two like Danny and, and Chad had like their you know relationship blossom going on but I, I think you could have done something more like like having like a real friendship for me building up and then when the twist happened like it could have been like a very dark and tragic you know twist to happen but I don't know um, it, I don't know, like, I think Ethan, um, and then the problem with Ethan was, like, they, they made it too predictable that Ethan was the killer, so I don't know what they could have done, 
Um, so it's just the question is, like, if, you know, maybe the, you know, uh, we, we don't really need three killers, maybe two was just fine, but, I don't know, um, but, yeah, uh, I don't know, so Ethan's yeah, just, I mean, like, yeah, we didn't okay. get that much screen time in the first place, and, you know, yeah, you know, you, you can see, like, the isolation, you know, in, in the group, in the group, like, okay, like, he's not one of them, I mean, Mindy yeah. already, already, Mindy already thought the worst of him, and they didn't really interact much in that. Yeah. In the film, and you saw, and even in the train, you know, Mindy was still, you know, suspicious, suspicious of him, and it turns out she was right, but. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but like, it's... yeah, it was like, it, it was, you know, it was definitely obvious, okay, Ethan's definitely one of the killers, at least. Yeah. I think if they could have done the same thing with Quinn, like, kill him off, and then, like, th like he just, like, sort of, like, have the Quinn, like, they did fake Ethan and Quinn's death, then I think the twist could have been much better. Because I think it's just a way, like, like, I think Quinn's death, like, the fake death of Quinn may help her become, like, like more acceptable at the killer reveal, where Ethan, I think, it was just, like, hitting at too much in the film, and like it was like kind of obvious. If you did again a fake death with Ethan, I think that could be much better in my mind. Um, yeah, and I I don't know, like like I, I think just um, and, and this is like um, yeah, you brought up like I think it's great time. Uh, I mean, with all the I think this is like the most under the like underdeveloped uh, like. Ghost face killers we have so far, and like I think we need to spend more time building up our killers in these last two films because these last two films have been kind of underwhelming with the killers reveal and the motivation. So, um, yeah, but, it's just all the same formula. Okay, the killers were revealed. Final yeah. battle with the main characters and the killers die. Let's you know, let's try something new this time where the killers actually survive instead of. I mean, I get it. The story has to like end on a good note. Yeah. Where like the heroes typically prevail at the end, but um, I think it should be something different, you know, for the next one. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, well, and then this is another criticism I need to discuss. Um, for like a lot of critics that bring up, well, a lot of fans and critics brought up the plot armor protection with the, our main characters. If like you know, if you're gonna stab Chad that much. You need to know you're gonna kill him off. If we're not gonna kill off Chad, do not do those multiple stabs. Just maybe knock him off, really. You know? Yeah, that, but yeah, it's like. You know? You get stabbed that many times again and survive again. It was like. Yeah. You must be invincible or something. <laughs> yeah. And then same thing with Mindy. Like, why do it yet again a stab for her? Like, I don't know. I. I yeah, and you... Tara got stabbed a couple of times too. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, like in the back, and then, and then, they, and then when she was going to kill Ethan, you know, well, stab Ethan in the mouth, like she got an understanding in her stomach, and like that could easily kill her with the blood. It's like, ugh. it's like, yeah, I, I think next movie they need to tone down the plot armor, kill or like don't do the overstabbing with some of your characters, you know? Right, yeah. I do feel like they went a little overboard with the stabbing. Especially yeah. to like especially to like chat to like Chad and to Tara's like, you know you're not gonna kill those two off. Yeah. So like, if, if you're gonna stab at least let it be once and not multiple times. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um yeah, just once or just maybe two, but that's that's it. I, I don't think you need to do it. To do an overkill with with your yeah, with those two. Um, okay, uh, I also brought up Danny, um, uh, the other character that was played by Josh Circuit, uh, who, who played Prometheus from Arrow Season 5. Um, uh, Danny was a good character. I like that Sam like, actually went back to do a relationship, uh, yeah, but she kept it like, secret. Um, it was funny, the running gag about the hot guy next door. I, I thought that was funny, and especially when the court four, like, Tease her about the guy and the next uh, to the next one. Now, like that was funny, and like they like knew it. And, like it was so funny when they 
they were teasing Sam about the, the hot guy next door. Um, yeah, I thought Danny was great. I was happy he, did, he wasn't the killer. Um, I wish he had more screen time, but with enough, with the the limited screen time he he did had, I bet you know Josh did a really good job of, um, you know, bringing that character to life. Um, I hope the the you know romance between him and and you know Sam can blossom and and be healthy. You know, uh, I don't know what you think about Danny. Yeah, and, and now she now she knows that she can she can trust him. Mm. Very true. He did call the police. <laughs> exactly. He, yeah, and he even brought... said to her at one point when she said, you know, I can't trust anyone. He even said, you know, they don't trust anyone, you know, not not even me, because, you know, he understood where she was coming from. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Um, yeah, a lot of this trust and trust here, and I'm happy that we addressed that well. Uh, in the movie, um, okay, so let's get into our favorite scene from the movie. Um, there's like a lot they did. The, so like the ladder scene was great. The uh, bu- uh the uh, bagel uh, uh, ba- uh the, 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 the store scene or the, the uh, bagel a uh, uh, bagel yeah uh, bagel uh, uh, bagel s- s- store uh was uh, another one that was really intense. And then um. What was the other one that I brought up? The train scene was, uh, especially with the uh, the uh, Sam and Tara group, and then of course Mindy's uh, train scene. Like those two scenes were very tense and creepy. And then of course the finale with the shrine, uh, despite our <laughs> with the stabbing and then the killers. I think that was a great uh, final uh, chasing. Uh, and of course Gail's apartment scene chase was really good. Um, is is any of those? Wh- which one is your favorite of those scenes? What's like your favorite scene uh, in the the movie? Uh, I mean, mine's like I, I think mine has to be the the store scene. Uh, because uh, just seeing Sam and Tara together was great, and, and it was just like uh, I say, very intense. And then, and I actually found Son there actually. Uh, in Control. My favorite, my favorite scene was um, at the apartment. Um, the ladder scene? No, 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 no. Uh, that, that, but especially before the ladder scene, where um, okay, you know, where just the group was comforting Sam and letting her know that, like, listen, you know, we're a team and we're, you know, we're here for you, and you know, we're all coping with this differently, but you know, we we got your back, and I, I thought that was. Mm-hmm. That was, you know, a pivotal moment, you know, for Sam, you know, to have that assur- assurance that, you know, she she does have people that do care for her, for her, even though, you know, according to the public, you know, she she's a villain, but she has these, she has her sister and her best friends that have her back. That was my right. favorite scene. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Because imagine if she didn't have her sister and she didn't have her friends, you know, I think that she would have been. She would have drove herself crazy. Well, my favorite scene now is with the sisters. First, they they finally accepting each other. Like I really like that Tara mentioned how you know, thank you for like letting me go, and then you know Sam replying that you know she needed to trust her. So like that was my favorite scene uh, in the film. Uh, uh, I I thought you know seeing their characters growth was really great. Like especially, I never thought that you know. You know, trusting your your sibling and like letting them go like was going to be a recurring thing in the film. Like was a great payoff, and I thought that scene really pay off the growth between the the Carpenter sisters. So that was my favorite scene. Uh, I was I was I was asking you what was like your favorite terrifying scene. That's where the ladder scene and the store scene. I was bringing all those up. Um, you know, I I don't know yeah, what's your favorite. I would, I would say the la- I would say the ladder scene because it had you. Okay on the edge of your seat and if if Annika had not been stabbed and she just had like a few more seconds I think she would have made it across the ladder oh, yeah that's true yeah yeah so yeah I agree but uh, obviously I think she was going to die regardless because she was already bleeding out you know before at, before she got to the ladder 
Yes, that's very true. I was like, how the heck is he still alive? But, and I, I mean, it was brutal. They like, like, oh no, you're not gonna die slowly to death. You're gonna like be dropping down. Yeah, and she was, she was only, she was only stabbed once. Yeah, I mean, the killer did like after he stabbed her. The killer did like you know lodge the lodge the knife deeper into her stomach because she was only stabbed once and she was already bleeding out. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very brutal. Um, yeah, I was sad that she she died. Uh, I mean, the, the you know when we like we saw the post death, you know her side being crushed by the the garbage can was like ooh, brutal. So yeah. Um, no, yeah, yeah, just like that was yeah, yeah. I agree, man. That was brutal when her neck snapped like that. Uh, oh, and yeah. then the camera zoomed into her face, you know, as she fell to, as she like right yeah. after her neck snag was like, nah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, yeah, that was creepy. Yeah, I, I, I brought up the store scene. Uh, that's my favorite terrifying scene. I mean, seeing Ghostface using shotgun was like, okay. I mean, it was crazy. Uh, and like, I mean, uh, the background music was great. Um, the uh. Uh, it was it was performed by in control by my love by uh, someone 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 uh I, I forgot the name of this one but oh actually I can pull it up uh but I, I thought you know uh, this uh as they are main characters the the carpenter sisters need to like uh be quiet to not like um I say uh, alert I say ghost face uh, uh, well, has a alert ghost face, uh, in, in their presence in the store, so <laughs> they're trying to escape was very terrifying. And so, I, I like how in this scene, this is where I, I really I think that scene also helped me like Sam more because he was doing a lot of smart things like picking up the can, soda, or beer, whatever, and throw it so, like, to make ghost face to move over the other side, so it allowed Tara and uh, and Sam to like go through that direction was really genius. And uh, when you know the you know obviously when Ghostface hears you know the glass noise and all that, you know okay they were lit. And I like the quickly they pushed down the like you know uh, standing of foods to, and you know to like knock down Ghostface like very clever. Like I think Sam was being very smart during that store scene. That was great. Um, and then uh, the question of the song is called I'm. Controlled by Your Love, that's playing in the background, and it's played by Helen Smith, uh, Grace Son. And speaking of songs, I want to mention the music here. Uh, the music was really great. I think Brian Taylor's score here was very great. I think he really amped up the tarot and, like, the expense music uh, for the Scream 6. So I think he did a really good job. Uh, great, you know, licensed music, uh, especially um, in my mind, uh, played by... Yeah, so that's nothing. I can check that now. But towards the end, we got uh, "Still Alive" by uh, Demi Level. I know you're like you like that song. And you put it in your uh, was it uh, Zoom or what do you call it a uh, Fox recording thing where like it tells you the the music uh, in my hand. Let me check that out uh, in my. Hand. Uh, it's just like sound soundtrack. Yeah, so, soundtrack. So. Hold on, let me. So, uh, let's get into it's, uh, In My Head. Okay, In My Head by Mike Stern and Kyle Morgan. That's the, the artist that does In My Head uh, in the beginning of our, our screen credits. So, anyway, uh, so to wrap things up, let me bring up uh, interesting facts about this movie or our actors. First up, I want to bring up Jack Champion. Yeah. First, Jack Chapin is Spire. I mean, if you've seen Avatar The Way of Water, he, he's you know, now famous because of that. But, Chris, I don't know. If you you actually see him before, if he was in another $2 billion movie, in, it was from 2019. It was the biggest one. Of course, it's part of our favorite franchise. What was it? What was Please. I'm sorry, say that again one more. So, yeah, so Jack, Jack Chevin um, uh, was in 2019 second 
uh, was in the movie that was crossed the two million dollar mark. Is in a, he's in one of our favorite uh, franchises. We saw a movie in that franchise recently in February. In uh, in this particular franchise, it, it, he was in this movie in 2019. He came out in April, and it killed off our favorite uh, Bellhead. What movie I'm talking about? We saw it in February. Uh, 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 anyway, anyway, it was Avengers Endgame. He was in Avengers Endgame. Oh, in okay, 2019. Yeah. Uh, anyway, oh, okay. so he okay, so he's in Avengers. Yeah, Endgame. I was like, I I didn't understand you. So we, I didn't understand you for for a second. So uh, never mind. like I didn't hear, I didn't, I didn't hear what you said with the the name. So it's like uh, Jack Kemp, Jack Kemp, Jack Kemp. Okay, he's the kid that Ant Man passes when he came back from the quantum realm. Okay, he's the kid in the bike. He, he like he whips his tear off his cheeks and he like just runs off and then Ant Man like is confused. Because he doesn't know about the, you know, the blip. All right. So he asked the, he asked the kid like what what happened, and the kid just stares yes. at him and just he continues to write off. Yes, correct. Um. Okay. Here's another where, and this is quickly. This is a, a good one. Um. So we got a couple of pop culture horror related things. Like uh, we see one girl wearing the ready not a, S- a Simona Reeves character's wedding dress uh, mm-hmm. in the train. Um, and we see some of our best horror characters, like Freddy, is in the train. Uh, Michael Myers is in uh, uh, in the train station. Uh, Chucky and his girlfriend Tiffany Valentine is in the movie. Uh, well, well, I say in, in costumes. Uh, uh, Pinhead, uh, you see briefly, and then you see Jason. Uh, speaking of Jason, uh, Tony Murray's character is named Jason, which is funny and ironic that he's named Jason. Also, Jason Voorhees, and guess what? He's watching in his apartment. Jason takes Manhattan, the movie where Jason goes to New York, just like Ghostface goes to New York as well. So, so boom, crazy trivia there. Um, uh, other like cool, uh, I think horror ones. A big one is the Barber Duke. You actually see the Barber Duke next to our, our, our Sam and Tara and uh, and, and uh, Danny and uh, Chan in the train. And then I'm figuring out, uh, and then I also, uh, you see uh, the doppelgangers from Us, the Jordan Peele film. You see the couple of uh, uh, teenagers wearing the red, uh, uh, like, jumpsuits. And then uh, and then you see the Grady twins uh, from The Shiny, these creepy twins. They're in, like, the Overlook Hotel. And then the last one to wrap up is... This one was funny. Uh, oh, and Wednesday. You actually see Wednesday in the, the, the frat party. So uh, that was kind of cool. Last one. This was funny, and I didn't know this. Um, we see a Mojo Jojo cameo. Uh, if you don't know, Mojo Jojo is the main villain for Park Puff Girls, the cartoon show. Um, funny. Who? Guess what, Chris? You know who voiced Mojo Jojo in the show? Uh, who? Uh, Okay, our resident Ghostface voice, our uh, Roger uh, J. Jackson. What? Yeah, the the Ghostface killer's voice, the the mantra, the is voiced by uh, Roger L. Jackson, he, the voice Jeez, of Ghostface. Wow. Yeah, he voiced Mojo Jojo. So we, this was funny that they we have a Mojo Jojo here, and he voiced Mojo Jojo in the Parf Girl Girls cartoon. So that was very funny. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that is very that is very funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Um. Oh, another thing. Uh, the store. Um, he say a uh, name is called App Snake. That's something from Wes Craven. Um. That's like I think. Uh, here, I think I'm trying to figure out. I think they say something here. Um, oh yeah, like like there's constant reference here. Like people, uh, like there's a couple of like Craven's movies, like uh, uh, Deadly Blessing, uh, People on the Stairs, a Vampire in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm trying to figure out that they find it here. Uh, it's in my notes. Uh, but the store is named after I think. Well, oh, one of uh, West Cream. Okay, I know what it is. So the F Snake is actually his like secret name when he was doing adult films during the seventies. So 
that's like a huge one. And then if you see the dates of 96 in the film, there was like a lot of 96. That was the reference to the year when Scream like came out. And the when the whole franchise was born, so when you see every number ninety six, like especially in the subways, we were seeing like it was like ninety six, uh, or like or like Gail's apartment was in ninety six West or something like that. Like that was referencing the Screams year when it came out. Uh, the first film came out in nineteen ninety six. Uh, but yeah, uh, what else I can? Um, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of ninety six. Um, yeah, uh, what else? Oh, oh, apparently the, uh, hold on. Uh, oh, it was funny, um, this is the first time, uh, this is funny, no, nitpick, uh, or, like, funny notes. Uh, Jenna and Sam actually worked together before. They were, they were in a movie called The Babysitter, Killer Queen. So this is, like, the second time they worked together, um, in a film. Oh, and speaking of horror movies, Sam, we, uh, Sam, Samara Weaving and uh, Henry Serres, the the psychology person who was a the, the psychology for Sam in the beginning, and of course he died later in the film. Those two were also previously um, collaborators of the directors of Radio Silence from their first uh, their major film, uh, Ready or Not. So they're here again. Uh, that, that's the one that I was talking about, uh, the wedding dress reference. That's from the movie Wedding or Not, uh, Ready or Not. So, yes. Okay. What else? Oh, uh, other uh, movie uh, horror references that I, that I did miss, like uh, Pennywise. You do see Pennywise. Um, do you see uh, Pickle? Uh, uh, well, uh, two, uh, two of the, the Japanese monsters from The Ring and The, the Grudge. So... Uh, yeah, uh, I think, that, oh, and in Jason's apartment, uh, there are posters from podcasts that cover horror content, so, like, there's one called The Last Podcast on the Left, and then another poster, We Hate Movies, okay. We can't hate the movie, what you want? We hate movies. <laughs> That's what they say, another poster is called We Hate Movies, so in the one of the bedrooms, the hosts of this podcast watch all sorts of films and decide if they should be left to waste in of time. <laughs> uh okay um yeah oh and then we got a couple of uh Afro Hitchcock films um like this is a big thing uh, that the screen franchise do they always reference Afro Hitchcock films uh like Vertigo and Psycho are like actually in this movie so I don't know where I, I think there were like movie posters we we kind of miss um but they're also like name drops like uh, like there's a character named Billy Loomis from Psycho and of course the name for our main killer here um but yeah oh here's another one of uh, the core for grab the subway in 96th street station at their attack on Gale which could be a reference the fact that the original scream is in 1996 and then they mentioned one of their stops is also 72 street that's a reference to Russ Graham's movie The Last House on the Left that came out in 1972 so that's it. Um, yeah, that's that's it. Um, yeah, Scream Six. Uh, is there anything else we have to say, Chris? I think we covered everything. Uh, uh, yeah, there was a you got a lot more out of this film, and it was definitely more brutal and more bloody. And I mean, Jenna Ortega had been teased had teased this already, so we definitely we definitely got what we expected. <laughs> Yeah, I agreed. I guess my favorite kill was... I, I think it was definitely Ethan, because of what the Edrega did. Like, she just stabbed the hand and said, like, now be a, a virgin. <laughs> so, that was very funny. Uh, what was her funny scene from this movie? I mean, it was that, and then uh, Gail hanging up with Ghostface, and, and like, reading the, the, the phone. I'm glad but, they didn't go overboard with the cursing. Oh yes, that's true. They didn't. Yeah, I I think the cursing here was pretty good. Um, yeah, they yeah. kept they kept it at a minimum. They didn't curse a lot, so I I I like that. You know, there's ways to express yourself without having to resort to cursing so much. Yeah, uh, that's true. I agree. Yeah, it, it's kind of like uh the hitman's bodyguard. 
Like every time you hear several Dax and cursing, it's like, okay, you're doing that because you like to hear. Yeah, you're like you're doing you're doing too much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's the word MF for a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, he has some of my favorite. Like he had some funny ones. Like I still like the, I mean, the the snake and the plane thing. Like I had it with this mother fucking snake and this mother fucking plane. Her. Yeah. Anyway. We um, please don't curse. Please don't curse, Andre. Yes. Uh, and, I, and I'm glad you don't. And I'm glad you don't curse. Honestly, you don't really curse. You don't really curse a lot. Like you're not like. Actually, like, when I was a youngling, I curse a lot, and I only I do not curse a lot from you, but I do curse from my other friends for community uh, purposes. So um, yeah, that's why. But I mean, if you want me to, I'll, I'll give you all the f bombs, the jokes I can give you. It'll be fun. No, no, I'm good. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's where it, it's funny you brought that up. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I think it was good. It was reasonable. Um, it it wasn't like yeah, like the Hitman Swipe franchise. It was it was like very reasonable. Uh, same same thing like the Screams uh, Five. Like when they dropped the F bonds, it was like in a good place. So yeah, uh, all these six like, screen films did a good job of like they don't they don't throw like a lot of the like uh. Like f bombs and and all the curse words, like mm, like not a lot compared to other films, but like they when they do it, they it, it hits right, so which is good. So it's good. It's good that you brought that up. Um, yeah, I I don't know I don't know how you place like uh, you know last thing like I did a ranking for you. Um, I just did like a rank for you of the screen all the six films, and this is my number two after the the first film. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the other films, Chris, but like how you place this uh, in no, the I've screen? No, I've, I've only seen um, Scream 5 and uh, this movie. Scream 5 and 6, yeah. Ooh, okay. We need to do a ranking video of Scream films, buddy. Like, you need to see Scream 1 and Scream 2. And they're nope, like great. Scream 6 is number one for me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You're not going to see all the films, you're just going to stick with these new ones. <laughs> Yep, pretty much. I'm not. I, uh, I I have. I don't have an. You know, like I said, you know, I'm not really into horror films, so I don't really have this interest to see the other ones. You know, I felt like Scream wow. show, Scream Six showed you what truly a, a horror film is, so that's why I rank it at number one. Wow, that's crazy. I well, audience will. My general audience, and folks, if you're listening to this, I will give you my rank, the proper rank. Go, and, go ahead. Know. So, okay, well, you, so... You, well, you know my rank, so, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, um, if, if you don't want to hear me talk about it, just go with the, the video. It's, you know, music and then pictures, and you see my six. So, uh, six oh, is... Talk about it. Talk about it. Give us your rank, buddy. Yes, yeah. sure. Oh no, I, I'm I'm not saying that like the other view. If you don't want to hear me li like listen to it, you can see the list without my voice. Anyway, um, six is screen three. Um, I mean, despite um, you know, the trouble production they had and you know the toned down balance, um, it's still a funny movie, but it doesn't mean it's the worst screen film. But it's still it's low on my list because I, I it doesn't is as strong as like the first two. So it's at number six. It's, uh, five is screen two. I like the sequel. There's a, you know, I think a couple of things they could have done better. The singing from Jerry O'Connor uh, and and the the cafeteria is cringy, but there's a lot of great terrifying scenes. I mean, Gail chasing by Ghostface in the 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 mic rooms in in the the theater is great. I mean, the the final set of the theater is really awesome. Um, the villains are great. I mean, Nancy Loomis and uh, Mickey Atari, played by Tiffany Alfond, uh, and uh, of course uh, Nancy, played by uh, Lauren Metcalf, was great. Um, and, and the sequel does a really good job expanding Cindy's arc from the first room, so it's good. Uh, four, I have Scream Five. Um, I mean, it's my first Scream in three years. I like it, um, but as time has passed, I mean, from really a year, uh, I think. Uh, there's you know little nitpicks. I mean, you, it's basically sort of like it's remaking couple scenes from the first film, so that's kind of annoying. And uh, uh, despite you know, like 
you know, introducing new characters. I mean, Kara is really the, the only character I like, where the others are, I think, are underutilized. They get killed too quick, and I, I wish we spent more time, like, especially Wes Hicks, the character. I wish we got more of him, and I wish he kind of survived. Um, Sam, you know, Sam Comfort being, like, supposed to be the lead, just gets kind of under cook and being kind of overshadowed by the three leads of the Leslie characters of so Dewey and Gail and Cindy. Um and the reveal of the, the, the screen, you know, the ghost face killer is okay. I like this it's about the staff franchise, but I I don't know. It I, I think we'd spend more time, but I think it's safe by but the performances by Jack Way. I, I think he was really great and I, I love him as the ghost face killer and uh, I think he helped to bring a lot of the funny moments. Uh, then, uh, let's see, so I'm at four, then number three is Screen 4, so, I mean, I mean, Screen 4 introduced us Kirby Reed, uh, who is back again for Screen 6, um, I mean, it's a great film, it talks about, the, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, 5 was about, you know, sequels, and then my other one, Screen 2, is about sequels, right, and then Screen 3 is about trilogies, this one is talking about about the trend of the torture porner and and the remakes that was going on during the mid 2010s uh and it's really like it hits you hard with the horror references it was just great um it's the last film that's directed by wes craven who sadly is not with us anymore uh he passed away in 2015 uh with cancer uh sadly so uh yeah this has to be high in the list uh for number three um Couple of issues, you know, just the issues just maybe the ending. I, I would like they were supposed to kill off Cindy and like at you run of letting the killer go, they were supposed to do that with the main ghost face killer in screen four. They were supposed wow, to Oh okay. Yeah, so they they were doing that. Um unfortunately it didn't happen. Uh reshoots happened. So um I highly I highly recommend you watch it, Chris, to watch screen four. For Wes Quaven. Anyway, then okay, number two. What? Yeah, yeah. I recommend you watching Screen Four for Wes Craven. That's his okay. last film. Okay, I'm dead serious. You need to see it. Anyway, no. Uh, uh, Anthony, uh, the NT, uh, the the guy, the creator that did Blackish. He's he's in, he's in that movie. He's funny. Yeah, he's funny. Uh, uh anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope you understand that. That yeah, I don't know. If you've seen the show Blacklish? Uh, I don't know. If it's, uh, it, yeah, I, I I I've seen that, but um, I stopped following it after a while. Okay, well, he's in that movie. He's funny, uh, funny actor. He's actually my favorite actors. Anyway, so number two is Screen Six. I mentioned four. I like Screen Six. It picks everything what I like about the last film, like particularly Kara, the sisters, and expand upon the character even more, which is the highlight of the film. Like the character development is the best out of the screen films, and this is why it's number two. Um, I really like the setting of New York. I like how it's not overdoing the New York setting. Like we don't have to see the, the Empire State Building or like, uh, or the Liberty, uh, uh Lady Liberty, whatever you call her, the statue. <laughs> We have, uh, you know, or like New York Center, you know, uh, uh, you know, Times Square. That's what I was trying to say. Um, you know, all that. Like, I, like you know, it was New York, but like we use some like certain things about city, like apartments and like alleys in ways that's creepy. I think they nailed it here. Um, you know, minor gripes. Why is number two? It's just like the, the ghost feel like uh, the ghost face killer reveals was weak. I wish they had better motivations. Display. It's you know I like the first connection and the thematical themes of family and, and like you know being survivors and all that. Um, but I I think I think the killers just like didn't get enough time screen time to be developed and all that. And then number one is the original 1996 Scream. It's awesome. It started everything. It We're going really, old school on the first one, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, you need to see the first one. Just for Wes Craven, buddy. It's funny. It's scary. You will like the opening. Like, the opening of the first original is still the best. Uh, it, it's, it, it, I cannot, I cannot spoil it for you. It's amazing. Um, I mean, everything, like, it's just the first film, it takes, it does everything right. In scene one, I mean, Cindy Prescott, 
played by Nev Campbell, is great in this film. And, like, Dewey, played by, you know, uh, David Arquette, and then, of course, uh, Ch uh, Clarence Boss, Gail Weathers is great here. Like, main killers, Bill Humas, I mean, Stu Martra is here. So, like, they were great uh, in this film. Like, you need to see it. It's one of the best horror films. If we, like, it re-energized the horror of Sandra in, during the late, late on the late 90s so so this is very important film you need to watch it chris it's very important film so um but yeah um i don't know if you want to get into scream 7 theories um because i i sort of remember the yeah, um yeah so i just want i just wanted to say that you know i enjoyed you know scream 5 and mm -hmm. and 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 scream 6 yeah listen i don't know much about you know horror films like horror films like that you know i was i don't know i just wasn't never into it and um but as far as scream 7 theories um i definitely again i would like to see you know a twist where the killer ghost face you know whoever it is actually survives um and just allow the core the fresh new face fresh you know faces you know just as the core four to be the main points in scream seven and not have any of the ogs this this time around yeah leave out gal you know let them stand on let them stand on their let them uh stand on their own um but at some point you know at least one one has <laughs> got to go you can't i don't want them to do or like you know, they get stabbed multiple times and still survive if you know you're not going to kill them off, you know. Yeah. At least, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, I agree. You know, don't repeat, like, don't repeat the same formula. Like, continue to subvert expectations. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I think is I think with the Tara and Chad relationship, like, you could definitely kill Chad. I think I feel that would be the most heart breaking thing because of because of Tara. And so they kinda of tease you kinda of like Infinity War. Like Infinity War like like made you set up Tony's death before you saw it in Endgame. You know, when he got stabbed with Thanos with one of his armor pieces in in, in Infinity War. And then when he got to Endgame it's like you knew that he's gonna die. So it's like that feeling. So I think they already set that up that maybe Chad is gonna die like officially next movie maybe. Um, yeah, in, in terms of Leslie characters, like, I don't need Gal. Like, I don't think you need her for the next film. I think you could bring up Kirby. I think Kirby has more interaction with our new characters. I think she could be a good, just, like, keep that Lexi character in the seventh film. I think you could do more with her there. Um, uh, I, you know, uh, space, uh, with the rumors about, like, I brought up the Stu Marker Alive thing. The fact they've been they teasing that with the last these last two films, like I think it makes sense that they're gonna bring like we're gonna get a returning ghost face and they're using Stu as the main one. So I don't know if they're gonna do it, but they're gonna be a main. If not, if they're gonna plan to do a eighth film, then maybe this new ghost face we're gonna get in seven will be their first recurring one to to survive. Yeah, you know? yeah, but like I don't want it to be like one killer or two killers. You know, I feel like, you know, it should be it should be a, it should be at least like a cult or just like I don't know, like a small I, I don't know, some like small fringe group at least, you know, make make the stakes make the stakes higher. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. That's where the stew thing will make it more sense. Like keep it with that one person. So yeah, so if they do that anyway, and the cold ghost face you meant to brought up, like that could be potential, like right, because a lot of people expected that in this movie and that didn't happen. So, um, my other theory, this one is important, is to finally see a the the mother, the 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 mom carpenter, Kristen Carpenter, like we really need that for our next film. You know, yeah, that 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 needs that arc needs to be addressed. You know, what yes. happened to the bomb. Yeah, we you know mentioned that he was away from town from fifth, and then you know in this film we got confirmation from Sam when she was talking to Gail in the you know the Shrine Theater that when she came, you know when when she 
told about the B. Loomis, you know, Sayo family, you know, of course, she cut out, you know, Sam completely, you know, and that five-year thing, and then when, you know, Tara find out about it, she cut off, you know, the mom because she was not going to talk to Sam and all that, so, like, I, I really want to see, like, you know, it, it, we can go of, like, the mother and daughters in the next film, and that, like, it, it's bound to happen, right? Yeah, right? it has to. It, it, it has to, I mean, you know, all this, and, you know, the mom is not there, and you want to know, like, what happened, you know, what's gonna, what happened with the mom, you know, where's the mom, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it has to be happened, and the the actress that plays Sam, you know, <laughs> without fan casting, who should who play her, so... So, yeah, the mom has to be, like, the number one to, to be in the do list for the next film. And then second will be maybe Stu, but I don't know. Like, that could happen. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Chris, thank you, buddy, for Thank you, Andre. For talking about Scream 6. Uh, this was a blast. I, yeah, yeah, of course. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, oh my god, I can't believe it. This is my first uh, 2023 film to see twice. So that's good news. So, uh, yeah, this yeah, was same, my... Same for me as well, Same for me as well, actually. So we're on the same boat. Yeah, so, yeah, I... So, yeah, so our next fast cast, I discussed this with Chris, would be our, t our first time together to do a film franchise or character ranking. But we'll discuss that like in depth after the podcast um and maybe possibly uh me and chris will be popping up in a podcast this friday maybe but i need to discuss this with chris i'll let people like it, this is related to the mcu bleeding edge if if this happens you're gonna see us Polly and friday but i need to tell us discuss Chris, uh, uh, you know, get his approval and, you know, all that. Anyway, um, yeah, our next major film coming out this week is John Wick Chapter 4. Uh, Chris, I don't know mm -hmm. you, I don't know you want to see it with me, uh, the Sunday, but, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, well, I yeah. Would like, I would definitely like to see it. Okay, all It's, right. it's gonna uh, definitely gonna be bittersweet, you know, because, you know, we, we both know, you know, unfortunately, uh, Lance Riddick um passed passed away. Um, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say if you're a fan of his filmography uh, and TV, you know, uh, he was great. So yeah, it's pretty sad and bittersweet. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, uh, we'll. Uh, so a lot of big things happening with us. Uh, but you can have to wait. So thank you everyone for listening to this great sport uh, sport cast on Stream Six. Of course, me and Chris will be back again to do our own podcast soon. Uh, but the same, but the same time, you probably will see us again in another podcast on Friday. Check that out uh, on the MCU Bling Edge channel. Have a good night, uh, what, everyone. What, what time on Friday? Uh, I'll let you. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> podcast. So uh, about details of that. Anyway, everyone, have a good night. Uh, we'll probably. Pop up in the MCU Bling Edge for you on Friday, maybe. Just maybe. Anyway, have a good night, everyone, and stay safe. Don't let those face ring you in your phone. Okay. Yeah. Bye -bye. Do not. Do not let him do that. <laughs> yep. Bye. Bye. Good night.